fire from the burn to the from the unburned to the burn. Uh, they're, they're operating right now with uh, as many uh, pumping apparatus and uh, elevated streams as possible with the water supply given. Uh, they are making headway at this time, but again, something like this would probably be a long operation. Okay, did they learn lessons from the first one? I mean, we were just about six months ago. And, and you know, and I don't want to speak directly to, to each department, but I can speak in generalities in, in the fire service. We definitely learn from uh, operations. These types of operations are debriefed afterwards. We found, found out what we did well. We found out where we could improve. So um, I'm 100% I'm positive that was done at many, many differing levels. Uh, the chief, again, uh, Chief Smith, task command of the incident. He is. He was out here for the other one. Uh, and again, one of the biggest things was uh, the the quick call for mutual aid. Uh, no delay there. So uh, we we were out here last time. Toledo Fire was. We're we're aware of the complex. We we have a good layout of the complex we didn't have before. So we actually positioned accordingly and got into position very quickly. I, I think that would probably be the biggest takeaway from this is from the last time was being able to know where to put the equipment and start flowing water very quickly. How about injuries out here? No injuries, no civilian injuries or firefighter injuries at this time. So small explosions, what could those be? Uh, unknown at this time, there's a lot of obvious debris in the piles, uh, don't know what those are. Do we know what material is burning in there? Is it vehicles? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not privy to that information. Metal X would have to answer that. Okay. And can you explain the scope of this? I mean, I was 14 miles out and mm -hmm. I could see the smoke and then about three miles out was when I started smelling it. How, how large is it's, it's a very large pile. Um, some of the piles on the back side and, and the front side before they started pulling around, I would guesstimate, uh, were in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 feet tall. Um, some of the dangers that go along with that is as they're pulling this apart, we have to make sure that the firefighters are not within a collapse zone uh, for, for their safety and, and for the equipment, but obviously the firefighter safety is paramount. Uh, some of the other dangers that go along with this is obviously you see the plumes of smoke, very toxic. Uh, we, we have to stay out of those areas, and in, in, we're in proximity, you'll see firefighters on air. They may not be fighting fire in, in uh, close proximity to the to the, the pile, but they're in enough uh, they're enough range of those that smoke to, that they need to be uh, warranted wearing their air supply. Is there any safety risk to people living around here from the plume? I asked the chief that at this point, no, but they're going to continue to monitor that throughout the operation. Um, if if you are experiencing any uh, respiratory or medical issues. Uh, you think it may be related to this, don't hesitate to call 911, but at this point we'd ask you to shelter in place. If you're in direct, or direct proximity to any smoke, if you can leave the area, we would recommend doing that. How does fighting a fire uh, from this material vary from other fires? Well, there's a, there's a lot of material here. I guess that's the biggest takeaway is, is that there's, uh, there's a lot of material that's burning. Uh, to be able to get to the seat of the fire, uh, unlike a, a, a residential fire where you can basically get to it fairly quickly depending on the circumstances, this has to be pulled apart. So it's burning very deep. It's a deep seated fire underneath a lot of debris. And, you know, again, there's different materials there that are burning um, that they have to be cognitive of. It, it depends on the, com uh, the composition of the metals. Uh, yes, there are some that react violently to water. Again, I don't know if that's out here or not. Uh, some of the explosions that sound more like uh, uh, like pressurized containers that are letting loose or maybe tires that are popping because of uh, the heat and the buildup. Uh, but again, some of the, uh, the, the metals do react violently to water. Right now, we um, that was one of the other takeaways from the, the initial fire. Uh, as we were responding out here, we heard the chief uh, from Delta requesting uh, multiple uh, quantities of foam uh, so that that is a agent that we use that will get into a deep seated fire go into that deep area so that was asked for and brought in very quickly i think for a lot of people who live here they're going to say this again mm -hmm. i mean it was massive it burned for two days last time mm -hmm. seeing this happen again is going to be very frustrating to them is that have you guys had discussions with metal x i mean what can what is it about this location that to be a hot spot, I, I can't. I, I can't speak to that. That's going to have to come from uh, from Metal X and Delta. Anything else? There? Uh, anything about the civilians who uh, who work here, who are tearing apart the, the debris? I mean, I imagine that can't be a safe job. What type, do they have training in this? I, I don't know. Again, that would be for Metal X to answer. We uh, we're, we're not privy to that information. They're being uh, they're. Their direction is coming from a, a different source, along with the with command. So their direction is coming from Metal X. Well, they're working in conjunction. Their metal Metal X employees or contractors working uh, through their their direction through Metal X, 
uh, and then also in conjunction with uh, the fire chief from Delta. He ultimately has command of this scene. He's making the decisions based on what he sees and, and the reactions that are happening to our firefighting efforts. How long will you guys be out here? Uh, that's unknown. Again, uh, I, I think uh, uh, as we discussed a few minutes ago, the last incident was uh, a couple days where they had a, a presence. Uh, I don't know if that's the case, but that's kind of the barometer of what we had from last time. I, I can't 100% speak to that, uh, but the, it appears that they are the ones that have operated the cranes before, so that would be an assumption. Thank you. All right. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. All right. So we're just going to turn around here for a second, let things clear out. We just heard from Butch Ray. He is the public information officer for the Toledo Fire Department. Scott Smith, who is the Delta Fire Chief, gave him permission to speak about the fire so that we can have information available for you right now. So like they said, they don't believe that you are in any risk if you live in Delta right now because of the fumes. However, they are saying that the firefighters here are going to have to stay on oxygen because being this close to the fire is very toxic and they have to be very careful, not knowing exactly what is in the metal that is burning currently. Now we were back here in the beginning of September for another large fire here in Delta at the Metal X facility. That one took more than 24 hours to be completely taken out. And they said that one of the things that uh, Butch Sterling Ray with the Toledo Fire Department said was that they learned some things from that fire. They came up with more of an action plan should Metal X have the same issue again. And here we are at another fire at the facility. He said that they were more prepared this time. Fire crews from not just Delta, but also the surrounding departments, including Toledo, had a better sense of where they need to go to battle the fire, how they need to take apart those piles, and what they need to do. So he said the mutual aid calls came in. They had more departments here faster. And the chief of Delta was on top of it when it comes to asking for foam and other things that may help get this fire down and help it go out faster. So that's what you're taking a look at right now. We are at the Metal X facility in Delta. You can see massive plumes of smoke. I, when I was driving here, you could actually see the smoke from 14 miles out on the turnpike. So it's a, that just gives you a sense of the size of this fire, the amount of smoke coming off of this as they are trying to put it out and about three miles in you just started to get this really bad burning smell so three miles out that's a pretty significant distance um, this metal x crane is huge uh, so it's hard to show you just exactly the perspective until you really see the buildings off to the side that are multiple stories tall and the plumes of smoke that are building on top of them just way higher up in the sky. Now we are hoping to learn more information. He says at this time, they don't believe anyone is in any danger who lives in the city of Delta. However, if you are having any uh, respiratory issues or anything like that, they're encouraging you to call 911. They say this is a shelter in place type of situation for people who live here right now. One of the things that they dealt with with the September fires were that a lot of people kind of came by to watch and actually got in the way of fire crews getting in. We're not seeing that issue this time. This road is much clearer. People are able to get through. I haven't seen any fire crews have to come in yet, but they're clear. the roads are cleared. So should they have to, they shouldn't have any issues. Now, one more thing, just to put it in perspective, uh, what Sterling Ray with the Toledo Fire Department was saying, he said that the pile that they are fighting the fire in was probably about other cranes that are being operated to tear apart all of this metal, all of these uh, cars to put them aside so that they can really get to the source of the fire, where it's burning and try and get it out as quickly as possible. So this is the latest update that we have for you. We will be live in our five and six o'clock shows and we will hopefully have more information for you then. We're just going to let you take a little bit longer of a look at the scene. We can now just see some flames that popped up. We weren't able to see the flames before, but now you can kind of see them above the pile of scrap metal that is in front of the flames that they're fighting. 
just to give you a perspective of how large this is, that metal X crane is not a normal size crane. That is very, that is a very large crane designed for this business specifically. And then the ladder truck, you can see the ladder with the water coming out of it, and it's still barely hitting the top of the flames that we can now see over that pile. So we're talking a very significant amount of smoke and fire coming off of this pile. As of now, we don't have a time frame for when it will be out. TP, um, Toledo Fire could not give us that at this time. They said this is kind of a fluid situation. Uh, again, the firefighters who are near there are having to be on oxygen just for concerns with what type of fumes they would be breathing in because this is a scrap metal facility. However, they say if you are living in the Delta area, you are most likely safe. However, should you have any respiratory issues, they're urging you to call 911. I'm going to leave it there for now. We're just going to let you see some video of the scene and we will have more at five and six reporting live in Delta. Emma Henderson for WTOL 11.